Hi everyone, this lecture is on platelets. In this lecture, I will be explaining you what are platelets, from where these platelets are synthesized, what is the structure of platelets and finally the functions of platelets. So let me start with what are platelets? They are formed elements present in the blood along with red blood cells and white blood cells. The platelets are the smallest among the blood cells. In this diagram, you can compare the size of the platelets with red blood cells and the neutrophils. See the platelets are the small fragments, they are derived from megakaryocytes and they are ranging between 2 to 4 micrometer in diameter whereas red blood cells are around 7 micrometer in diameter that means 2 or 3 platelets can make up one red blood cell and compared to the size of the platelets with that of neutrophil. See, neutrophil is 10 to 14 micrometers, whereas platelets is very small, 2 to 4 micrometer. So, let me start with how these platelets are synthesized within the bone marrow from the precursor cells. The platelets are derived from their precursor cells, the megakaryocytes, and the formation of platelets or the megakaryocytes in the bone marrow is thrombopiasis. So, this thrombopiasis is the synthesis of thrombocytes. What are thrombocytes? The other name for platelets. See platelets are derived from colony forming unit MEG. So these are the progenitor cells present within the bone marrow and these will differentiate to form megakaryoblasts. Megakaryoblasts will differentiate or mature to form megakaryocytes. And platelets are derived from these megakaryocytes. So, finally, giving rise to platelets. These colony forming unit megakaryocytes, the cells are a large cell with a large nucleus with multiple nuclei and fine chromatin fibers. The cytoplasm is scanty. When there is presence of some cytokines like interleukin 3 and thrombopietin, these colony forming unit megakaryocyte cells will they differentiate to form these precursor cells. These are the precursor cells, megakaryoblasts. So, these megakaryoblasts are originating from the colony forming unit megakaryocytes by the action of thrombopietin and interleukin 3. So now compared to the diagram, how is it the structure of megakaryoblast? These are immature cells, the blast cells. In this blast cells, the cytoplasm is scanty and the nucleus is large. The nuclear activity is more here. The nucleus is large with multiple nucleoli. and there are fine chromatin fibers almost similar to that of the colony forming unit megakaryocytes. The cytoplasm is scanty and there are no granules in the cytoplasm, a granular cytoplasm. This is around 20 to 30 micrometers in diameter. The blast cell, megakaryoblast is an immature precursor cell for megakaryocyte with large nucleus and scanty cytoplasm. Within the nucleus, there are multiple nucleoli and chromatin fibers and the cytoplasm is blue, scanty. There are no granules in the cytoplasm. The cytokines again interleukin 3 and also thrombopietin hormone will stimulate this precursor cells to proliferate and mature to form megakaryocytes. So, during the process of growth, what is happening? The cell is increasing its diameter and the membrane is thrown into fold like structures. 
these are pseudopodia of megakaryocytes the nucleus is dividing and dividing to form multi lobed nucleus so there are various number of lobes in the nucleus so this is the multi lobed nucleus all joined to form a nucleus the nuclear activity is more and it starts synthesizing more and more rna and more and more proteins are synthesized within the cytoplasm the protein content in the cytoplasm increases and these proteins will be stored in granules so there is formation of granules within the cytoplasm there are small granules and also big granules the small granules are delta granules or dense granules so this is dense granule this is one more dense granule here and these are larger granules we call them alpha granules alpha granules are bigger and more in number whereas dense granules are small this is the alpha granule which is bigger see these are all alpha granules which are bigger and more in number these are alpha granules and whereas this is dense granule and the organelle also increase in number the mitochondria will be more within the megakaryocytes mitochondria and also the endoplasmic reticulum and along with endoplasmic reticulum the golgi complex and the proteins which are synthesized over the rough endoplasmic reticulum will enter the golgi complex and this golgi complex have role in packing of these proteins into the vesicles so vesicles are pinched off from the golgi complex and vesicles are these granules are filled with the chemical substances which are synthesized by the megakaryocytes there is one more lining under the cell membrane so this thin layer of coils of microtubules are lining the cell membrane so microtubules the cytoskeleton underlying the cell membrane microtubules so i am drawing the microtubule cytoskeleton this is microtubule microtubule so this microtubule acts as a cytoskeleton to maintain the integrity of the cell membrane and also shape of the platelets the platelets are disk like structures they are not spherical they are not ball like structure they are disk like structure and this disk like structure is maintained by the cytoskeleton if there is absence of this cytoskeleton the shape is altered the disk will become spherical ball like in absence of this cytoskeleton the cytoskeleton is mainly microtubule proteins and this microtubules are made up of polymerization of tubulin proteins tubulin and also there are some invaginations of the cell membrane the cell membrane is getting invaginated inside the cell like this invagination of cell membrane we call this as canalicular system this is the canalicular system invaginations of cell membrane i'll draw one more invagination here so the membrane cell membrane is invaginated into the cell to form a canaliculi this is the canalicular system so through this canalicular system the granules can release their contents to the exterior the granules can release their chemical substances or the contents of granules to the exterior through the canalicular system and also these megakaryocytes will develop some contractile proteins i'll draw here some contractile proteins these are contractile proteins these contractile proteins are made up of actin myosin 
thrombostenin so these contractile proteins have role in contraction of the cells contraction of the cells so this is the picture of megakaryocyte the megakaryocyte nucleus is multilobed there can be 4 to 16 lobes multi lobe nucleus the cytoplasm is very much abundant the cytoplasm contains the cytoplasmic organelle mitochondria endoplasmic reticulum golgi complex and the cytoplasmic granules there are various types of cytoplasmic granules dense granules these are dense granules small one and few in number and there are large alpha granules alpha granules alpha granules dense granules and also there are some lysosomes these are also vesicles lysosomes so this is a mature megakaryocyte this is a mature megakaryocyte now you need to understand how platelets are formed from this mature megakaryocyte see the platelets are formed by budding off from the megakaryocytes let me explain how it happens see the membrane of the megakaryocyte is not round it is not smooth the membrane is thrown into projections the membrane is not like this round the membrane is thrown into projections so these projections are called pseudopodia they are extensions of the cell membrane so these extensions of the cell membrane can grow in length so this can grow in length the pseudopodia can grow in length and it can divide it can divide into multiple branching divisions and can elongate lengthen and at the end of these branches it can be expanded like disc so this is the pseudopodia pseudopodia is the membrane uh, expansion or extension of the cell membrane and this pseudopodia can give rise to more number of small small branching these branches are called proplatelets and at the tip of the proplatelets a disc like expansion is formed which is giving rise to platelets so this portion if it is getting detached so this is the platelet finally that is formed this is one platelet that is formed from the megakaryocyte meg so megakaryocyte cell membrane evaginates finger like projections are formed and they are called pseudopodia these pseudopodia will further evaginate elongate to form proplatelets at the tip of the platelets the disc like expansions are formed and they get detached to form platelets subsequently so these are all platelets they are derived from megakaryocytes around 3000 to 4000 platelets are derived from one megakaryocyte one megakaryocyte will give rise to 3000 to 4000 platelets and what is the factor responsible for this growth of pseudopodia it is the microtubules microtubules or the cytoskeleton which was under the cell membrane it starts invaginating like this it starts projecting into the pseudopodia and the microtubule will project into this portion and the elongation of this proplatelet is because of the microtubule pushing the membrane and do you think these platelets will have the cytoplasmic contents yes the cytoplasmic contents the organella and those granules all also will enter into the platelets through these proplatelets see consider this is a mitochondria this mitochondria also can enter through these proplatelets into the platelet similarly the granules also will enter into the platelets so the platelets will have all the composition similar to that of megakaryocytes except nucleus so nucleus will remain here the nucleus will not be entering into this platelets so these platelets are pinched off budding off fragments of megakaryocytes and they are a nuclear there is no nucleus within the platelets the platelet is a membrane bound small cell 
and the constituents of the cytoplasm is almost the same as that of megakaryocytes. Now let me draw, draw the structure of a platelet and explain you what are the constituents of the platelets. <coughs> 